Uh, Neil Sanderson from Three Days Grace in the Rock Zoom room. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing okay. I cannot believe that it was like 22 months ago you were sitting in this chair and I was across there and yeah. we knew something was up in the coming months. We just had no idea what we were in store for. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. Well, not much has changed in the in the fact that I'm only I could drive to where you're at in about 20 minutes right now. <laughs> no, that's great. That's great. So last time we chat, chatted, it was on the occasion of the new single by Diamante. So while your touring schedule uh, isn't what it was, hopefully it will be soon, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But it's allowed you to focus on your other endeavors. So you've actually been able to create some opportunity out of this mess. Yeah, I got really fortunate. I mean, just even with, with the band, we had toured so much in 2018 and 2019. Like we went, you know, we go kind of did a couple laps around the globe or whatever. And uh, so 20, we had planned on, you know, before the pandemic hit, we were like, let's just take 2020 off from touring. We can kind of casually chip away at stone with the new record and that. And then of course all this stuff happened. Um, but uh, a couple things kind of lined up that I'm very fortunate for is that, you know, first of all, our guitar player, Barry had decided he was going to move to Southern Indiana. Um, and some of his family lives down there. So we had, we already had had a jump on figuring out some technologies that would allow us to collaborate remotely and basically record remotely and have our producer right there on video conferencing and being able to, uh, with, with some, you know, as long as everybody has good internet, um, mm -hmm you'd be able to actually stream, you know, um, whatever, if I'm working uh, uh, on pro, in Pro Tools, which is a, um, I don't know, for, for digital music recording, it's a DAW, which is a digital audio workstation. Mm -hmm. uh, for pro Tools, you know, it's kind of the, how almost everything you hear is recorded these days. Um, and uh, and, we, and you can, you know, there's a technology that allows you to, you can stream what you're working on like real time and full quality. So if, whoops, sir. So if everybody's in there, you know, if everyone's in there, uh, you know, in a studio or home studio, in front of a good set of speakers, that plus Zoom, um, it we kind of you get that you find that vibe where um, you know you can you can make it happen and it feels kind of like you're in the same room and stuff. So we just rolled with that and and you know um, with the with the Diamante thing, like uh, on my part, I've I've kind of since formed a uh, formed like a production company, kind of little record label, just getting started, fledgling or whatever. But it's with uh, our producer Howard Benson, um, and that so that's so the Diamante record that we worked on was sort of that that was our first thing, and and we haven't really stopped, and and just uh, most of it I'm doing from home, and uh, we've just kind of made it work, you know. So you're turning into a you're turning into a magnate. <laughs> well, I I just I wake up I don't play video games, and I don't you know for me like uh, I don't watch a lot of TV or net, like series or anything like that. I, when I wake up, I want to make something. I don't know if it's going to be good or if it's going to suck, but so I've, I've, you know, I'm lucky to be able to, to be able to do that with, you know, we've been working, pounding it. I just got off the a zoom call with three days grace just now putting some like finishing touches on some decision-making. But um, in addition to that, you know, with, with uh, being able to, you know, make music with Howard Benson, uh, it's kept me, it's kept me busy. Like, I, you know, I'm very lucky for that. Good for you. Um, one thing I've noticed about you guys over the years is that you have this pattern of releasing new music every three years. Is that by, is that a conscious choice? Is that a, is that design or just coincidence? Uh, no, it's not by design. I mean, we're a year behind now. Uh, it's four years now. Well, yeah. So already, eh? Yeah. Yeah, we added, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had to add an extra year, you know, we're, we're not getting any younger. We just need a little more time. <laughs> uh um, No, it kind of just works out. Like, it basically takes us a year to make a record, like from writing it to to you know delivering the master recordings um and then you know generally we tour for almost we'll pretty well tour for two years you know and a lot of the time though while we're on tour we will be like working on the next body of work so um so yeah it kind of just it, it had been three years like clockwork but that just the way that the the cards fell you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as a drummer do you find it harder uh staying in shape and getting back into shape and how long does it take you to be tour ready? Uh, well, it's a lot of cardio. So like, as long as you're running and hitting the treadmill and, you know, kind of do it, doing some of that um, and, and keeping your chops up, right? Like 
I mean, going and sitting and practicing drums, like on like, just I like to just play to other play to other um, songs and artists that like mm -hmm. with, really have challenging drum parts and just kind of you know and and uh, if you go sit down and do that for an hour, you come out of there soaking wet. So like mm -hmm. that is so it can be your work that can your be be your workout regimen. There's you know which is a, a pretty productive thing to practice and get a workout at the same time, but. The worst thing is getting a rude awakening. You know, you haven't been on the treadmill enough and uh, your first show is like outside and it's 102 Fahrenheit and, you know, and humid. And it's just like, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> like <laughs> You're like shaming yourself. Yeah, I, I do remember one particular show where I, I looked, it was just like, whoa, there's no air to breathe and I'm not clearly ready for this. And I looked down at my drum tech and he's a pretty good drummer. And I said, you better get ready because I'm going, oh. I, think, I'm, I might be going down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad that didn't happen. That's great. Um, new single called So-Called Life. Tell me about it. Uh, well, it comes out of the gates pretty, you know, kind of jumps out of the speakers. Um, and it's like one of our heaviest things we've done in a long time. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's about, you know, I, I, So-Called Life. It kind of re represents you got, you know, when you keep bottling things up inside and you can't you know, we're living in a world where it's like dangerous to express yourself and, and maybe throw out your opinions uh, too recklessly. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's, I don't know, it's created a bit of culture of people bottling things up inside and, you know, and everything, it, if you do that, it, everything's got a, a boiling point and a tipping point. And, um, you know, our new al album is called Explosions, which kind of just uh, contemplates that, the, the notion of uh, finally needing to express and release and be yourself and having and and every, because everything boils over and uh, there's a lot of uh, you know repercussions and and it, bad things that can happen when everybody has something sit. and so you know so called life just kind of talks about that like you know i it's all building up it's all building up and i can either you know just go and explode or uh, or give me something to take the edge off it for now mm -hmm. you know uh, Brad's been with you now for, or, or excuse me, Matt's been with you now for eight years. Yeah, almost, yeah, we're almost half the life of the band. Does he still feel like the uh, the new guy? Uh, not really. No, he's and especially this record, he just owned it. You know, he works hard every day. Like, mm -hmm. you know, he, he's you know he's working out a lot. He's he's like MMA. Like, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I you know I wouldn't go toe to toe with him personally. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, no, he's in great shape, and he's like, you know, he works on vocals all. Day. He's just a hard worker, and uh, and you know, we live co close together, so we hang out, and you know, he's he's got his he's got his dirt bikes and his four wheelers, and he's got his, you know, he's we're we're kind of we're really kind of outdoorsy country guys, like uh, you know, at heart, and and um, you know, I have a place up near Norwood with with some property, and. So we rip around on dirt bikes and kind of have that life going as well. And then, you know, it's, it's uh, to get a little fire going and get the guitars out. It's just like, it feels like in a lot of ways, nothing's really changed. Cause I mean, he's been around for, <laughs> since he was a kid, you know, he's, he's, mm -hmm. he's our, and we all kind of, you know, I I'm from Peterborough, but I spent a lot of time out in Norwood as a teenager. And, and he's, so it's all in a lot of ways, nothing kind of changed. It's almost like it was like the chapter that was meant to be. It's yeah it's nice to be it's nice to be friends and business partners at the same time because there's a kind of understanding that doesn't exist otherwise oh yeah if i mean man i i couldn't imagine uh you know having where uh, being in a situation where you don't trust each other or you don't enjoy each other's company and stuff and you have to go jump on a bus and then get on stage and like you know, you sit in a sweaty hockey dressing room, like waiting for the show to happen. Like, I mean, like, it's nice that we're all like bros. <laughs> What's the smelliest dressing room you've played to or played in or changed in? Oh, man. They're I all heard Pops Coliseum used to be pretty bad. Yeah. You know what? Actually, we got a tour of the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins uh, dressing room. And I've got some photos of it. I got your email, Lee. I'll send. I'll send you this photo. But uh, okay. you know, uh, Cros Crosby. He's you know the captain. So it was a beautiful dressing room, like crazy. And uh, so you could just see. Okay, but well, this is Crosby. So, and uh, I had heard the folklore before, but like the guy has not washed or changed his jock strap, his jock since like since like high school hockey. And it's just everyone else has all this brand new gear. <laughs> you know. 
I'm not proud. I went and <laughs> straight to cry. Okay. But I had just heard the rumors and the rumors are true. It's like the thing is just festering. It's a, it's a Petri dish, but maybe I think that's, that might be the, the, <laughs> the secret to his success. I don't know. Well, you know, hockey players are uh, a superstitious lot and uh, Neil, that's too much information. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's, there's a different, there's a, there's a difference between superstition and hygiene. Uh, <laughs> well, apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> no, when it comes uh, tour, to sport. tour plans for uh, 2022, I presume. Yeah, yeah. So we've we put some stuff. We've announced some stuff. Uh, uh, we're we're doing uh, uh, some stuff with Godsmack down the east coast of the U.S. That's kind of mm -hmm. where we're starting, and it's it's kind of it's funny because we you know we haven't played since 2019, but uh, our the first show that we the, our first show back is going to be like 20,000 people. We're just like okay, all right. <laughs> change of scenes all right <laughs> like which is gonna which is cool and it's exciting like we're we're chomping a bit to get on stage do you so think you'll be a little bit nervous yeah i totally get nervous yeah yeah i i feel like you know yeah it's it's a it's a comedy it's you know adrenaline butterflies nervousness you know uh and just eagerness to just go and just seize seize the moment but um yeah i feel i always kind of said to myself like once once uh, I don't have those feelings before I play, where it's just like another another gig, then I feel like I'm I'm going to retire. That's it. Yeah, you know that's what I was that, that's what I was going to say. The, you know the the day that uh, that you don't feel some sort of butterflies before you go on, maybe means your head's not in the right place. Yeah. Well, I'm not near there yet. I, I yeah, can't. Good for you. And actually, um, you know, we're we're actually working out a bunch of Canadian stuff right now. It's just nothing's announced, so I can't do, uh, say any specific. But there's we're we're going to be uh we're going to be you know not we're going to be kind of lapping around here in a little bit okay hopefully this summer then uh yeah yeah i think that might be a distinct possibility great okay congrats uh when's the new record coming out the may yes yeah, it's, it's called explosions explosions yep. comes out may the 5th okay beautiful and the new single is called so called life and i think it's coming out uh friday the 20 d -d 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 i lost my date no oh, it's monday it's for some reason everybody else puts out records on fridays yeah, we just yeah. we pick monday i don't know okay great. <laughs> so monday the 29th okay great great all right congrats good luck with everything and uh, good luck on the road we'll see you back in these parts hopefully by summertime all right good to catch up lee all right likewise neil sanderson three days grace in the rock summer cheers guys